And let's move now to our debate with uh, Vice President uh, Franz Timmermans. Dear Vice President, when we last welcomed you to our plenary, we gave you our full support for the Green Deal. Since then, the pandemic spread throughout Europe and local and regional governments since have been fighting to save lives and jobs. The Green Deal is even more important today than ever before. We cannot and we will not let the pandemic hinder our investment in protecting our environment. We need a green, just and resilient recovery for all regions and cities. This must be Europe's turning point. We must act together and accelerate the transition towards a sustainable economy and society. Dear Vice President, dear friends, the MFF and recovery plans are exceptional and represent the true spirit of European solidarity. This is our shared priority and our common responsibility. We see the Green Deal going local as an opportunity to demonstrate the real added value of the European Union. For people living in regions, cities, villages, and it needs to be inclusive, and we all need to take ownership. Vice President, I want to share with you a small collection of 200 real green projects that were developed by our committee's members. You will see in this work that we have done how Olu in Finland is using Horizon 2020 to support green technology to reduce and reuse energy used in buildings. You will also discover how the dynamic light project brought Central European municipalities together to improve public lighting. The impact is clear. For the Croatian town of Chakovec, energy consumption fell by 65 percent and it saved 56 tons of CO2 emissions. You will learn how the Italian region of Marche used cohesion funds enabling small municipalities to receive grants and loans guarantee to update their bus fleets and retrofit public buildings. All these examples show that the Green Deal is not starting new, but building on decades of positive change by local and regional governments. Let me express my support for the 55% 2030 climate target. It is not only feasible, Vice President. It is necessary. The proposed MFF and recovery plans will put the wind in our sails. But it is our regions, our cities and villages that are the engines that will propel us forward towards climate neutrality. Dear friends, our members and I are determined to shape the Climate Act. We are ready to build a network of elected climate local and regional leaders in all EU member states. We want to work with you to place the Green Deal at the heart of national and regional governments' investment plans. Today, let us reinforce this cooperation that has started between our two institutions. Let us commit to developing a joint European Commission Committee of the Regions Action Plan. The purpose is to give local and regional governments the support, knowledge and access to EU funds to make the EU Green Deal tangible for their communities because 
building energy sufficient schools and hospitals will cut emissions, create green jobs, making our transport cleaner and mobility smarter, protecting our natural habitat. These are some of the essential areas that fall under our competencies. These are clear actions we are committed to working together. Dear Vice President, we need to act today to save lives, jobs, and of course our planet tomorrow. We are offering you the leadership and trust of our local and regional governments. So let's launch this cooperation today together so we deliver on our promises to our citizens and our children. The floor is yours. Thank you. Vice President Timmermans, the floor is yours. Um, I seem to have... Is, am I on now? Because I keep on pushing the button, but it's... Yes, yes you are. are. Oh, okay. But I have to start from the beginning? <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Start from the beginning because we just, we just got, got you now. now. Ah, okay. 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 Hello, Hello Vice, Vice President. President. Okay. Okay. Kalimera, Kirie Predre. Um... I have to say, you know, what I what I love is to see all the people signing in from all across uh, the European Union, all these wonderful regions and cities that I love so much, I love to visit, I love to be there. This is where Europe is, in those cities and those regions, not in this building, not in your building. It's there. And we're working what we're doing, we're doing for the people out there. That's why I would like to underline the words you spoke in saying that we need to cooperate. Um, we are faced with... Uh, an unprecedented challenge. Of course, COVID is throwing us curveballs every day. When we think we're recovering, we're going back in the wrong way, etc. And, you know, we all need you, wherever you are, to convince every single citizen that following the guidelines the authorities are giving is the only way out of this pandemic. It only takes a small group of people who ignore the guidelines to keep the pandemic alive and to keep the disease, uh, to, uh, to continue the spreading of the disease. So we really need everyone's effort to contain the pandemic. But in this pandemic, the other challenges have not gone. We're in the middle of an industrial revolution that is, has the potential to create huge upheaval in our economy, uh, wherever you are and whatever job you have and in whatever industry you work. And then, of course, there is a climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis. There's the changing international relationships. All of this comes together. Now, the good thing is that uh, Europe has shown an unprecedented level of solidarity in deciding to mobilize uh, at the European level enough funds for us to recover from uh, the economic effects of the COVID crisis. But we have to make sure we do this in a way that is consistent with our need to tackle the climate crisis as well. So that's why, for us at the European Commission, the Green Deal is also the roadmap we need to get out of the crisis. Uh, we're going to be spending a lot of money that uh, we're going to take out of the market, and sooner or later that money will have to be uh, put back, uh, re-earned. And it can only happen if our economy is future-proof. And the only future-proof economy we have is an economy that is sustainable, that uh, ends our dependency on fossil fuels, that reduces our emissions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I've seen the priorities um, your committee has put uh, on uh, the table, the three uh, priorities, um, uh, which is uh, uh, the renovation wave, clean transport, and greening cities. Um, the Commission fully subscribes uh, to those priorities. Let me start with the renovation wave. We will be uh, launching our renovation wave um, 
tomorrow, actually. Uh, and the renovation wave is a unique opportunity to reduce emissions, so uh, that would reduce your energy bill, to improve the quality of our housing, and not just the private housing, also the community housing, but also schools and other buildings uh, of general purpose, um, it will create immediately create jobs for small and medium-sized enterprises, and it will create a sense of optimism, I believe, for many citizens who will see that they will be part of this uh, development and that they will have benefits from this uh, development. I say this uh, because one of the biggest fears I have in all of this, in any time of huge transformation, tectonic change, and we're living in times of tectonic change, there's always a risk of people losing out, of people not being able to uh, follow the developments, of some people winning and a lot of people losing. And the renovation wave is one way to make sure that we tackle the challenge of energy poverty in the right way. Um, so the renovation wave, which you subscribe to, which we subscribe to, should bring us closer together to work concretely on projects because it has to happen in in communities, in, in cities, in villages, in regions. So we need to work directly with you uh, to make it happen. There are a number of successful initiatives already across the European Union, but by far not enough and not at a scale that is uh, big enough. Uh, you know, we need to double our efforts, double our efforts in terms of renovation, insulation of buildings, putting solar panels on buildings making sure all buildings are on broadband and, and bringing 5G, changing the transport infrastructure, etc. We need to do all that, uh, and it can be done, and we will mobilize the funds, but you need to be an integral part of that. Clean transport. I get this requirement from all over the European Union. Wherever you are in the European Union, almost all cities say we want zero-emission public transport. I think this is something we need to work on. Um, and also, I, think, I believe this is so important because another divide I fear, and this is, goes very much to the heart of your committee, another divide I really fear is the increasing divide. It's almost a chasm now between urban areas and rural areas. This is a, a, a global phenomenon because there is a huge movement of urbanization globally, um, especially to very big cities where a lot of people who see a lot of opportunity go to, but that sometimes leads to a brain drain in more rural areas. Uh, and also the economy develops along the lines of urban areas and less on rural areas. Whereas at the end of the day, urban areas will not be vibrant without the support of vibrant rural areas. And rural areas need the feedback from urban areas also to be able to follow the developments into uh, this new economy. So we need to prevent the chasm, the, the divide between all, uh, urban and rural areas to become bigger. We need to close that. Uh, I think modern technology, digitization can really help there. Uh, I also believe people want to live healthier lives, and for that we need rural areas. People need um, a, a different sort of agriculture, closer to the people's needs, healthier, etc. We need rural areas. And rural areas will have to provide some of the important carbon sink that we need to uh, be able to arrive at climate neutrality in uh, 2050. And transport is essential for that relationship. So we need to up the ante on bringing electric mobility to the people. We need to help the automotive industry go there uh, uh, quicker so that uh, electric mobility uh, becomes less expensive and more accessible to ordinary people, which is something we really need. So we need to build an infrastructure uh, of charging stations. We want to uh, do that and invest in that together with you. It's extremely important that we do that. We need to further develop the hydrogen economy. So for the heavier transport, we can create zero emission vehicles with um, uh, fuel cells uh, driven by uh, hydrogen. I think that's a, a very promising uh, a development, and for that we need to produce hydrogen, clean hydrogen, green hydrogen. For that we need electrolyzers, and our plans are to uh, create six gigawatts of capacity uh, three years down the line, and in ten years' time we want to be at forty gigs capacity, uh, gigawatts capacity for uh, hydrogen. Uh, with the surrounding countries in North Africa and Eastern Europe, we could even perhaps attain eighty gigawatts uh, of capacity. That would be. Uh, a, a huge change. Then, of course, we need to um, 
green our cities. Uh, today, in Europe, every year, 400,000 people die prematurely because of bad air quality. And especially in those member states and regions where coal is still the primary source of energy, we need to help that transition happen. These regions cannot do that on their own. They need strong support through the Just Transition Fund and other means from the European Union. Take Silesia and Poland, for instance, uh, or other regions in, in the Czech Republic, in Poland and Bulgaria, etc. Um, uh, in, in Germany, they really need to transit out of coal and they need uh, our support. Um, Mr. President, let me take your own home country as a perfect example of this. The audacity, the audacity of the Greek authorities to get out of lignite so quickly is, is a good example for the rest of Europe, uh, an example that should be followed and admired. But the regions that go out of the lignite uh, production will then, of course, need another um, uh, uh, possibility, another potential. And for that, Europe should be stand ready to help those regions on the basis of their own ideas and uh, their own uh, plans. The greening of Europe, let me uh, emphasize that, is not only a, a matter of cities, but starting to green cities. When you green your cities, so decarbonizing public transport, having more bike lanes, uh, managing uh, uh, um, uh, mobility better, um, uh, creating more ac ac accessibility through bike lanes, through uh, walking paths, etc. This is something citizens want across the European Union. And if you add greening to that, you hugely improve uh, living quality in cities. But greening is not something you need to uh, uh, limit to cities. Many of our forests in the European Union are in a horrible shape in a horrible shape, and they need to be upgraded. So uh, we are losing carbon sink today. We are losing biodiversity today by upgrading uh, our forests, by upgrading our grasslands, by upgrading our peatlands. We increase um, carbon sink, and we uh, sh uh, absolutely improve um, uh, biodiversity uh, as well. So how can we work together? Let me just give you quickly uh, three uh, thoughts. First, uh, we as Commission are already working with the Covenant of Mayors uh, to deliver concrete actions. Um, we have brought together uh, uh, something like 9,000 mayors who take action uh, for the climate. Your committee can certainly bring uh, added value to the initiatives and also ensure that we align our actions in cities and rural uh, communities. As I said before, this is one of my top priorities. Um, so that's why I believe the Committee of the Regions should get a direct seat on the political board of the Covenant of Mayors. And I commit to that before you uh, today, Mr. President. In that uh, new context, we will start a new phase of collaboration between our two institutions. Our services can meet ahead of, of, um, of meetings of the Covenant of Mayors, uh, and also after the meetings of the Covenant, uh, can sort of compare notes and see how we move forward. Uh, we can inform you uh, then in those meetings on upcoming funding calls that are relevant for your projects. And finally, I believe, and, and you and I, Mr. President, discussed that before, that the committee should be a key part of our climate pact that will launch later this year. This pact is about bringing citizens together to share knowledge on climate change. Uh, active citizens can become climate ambassadors and create grassroots projects for climate action. And uh, uh, I, I would like to invite your committee, uh, Mr. President, today to be our channel for your members who become climate ambassadors under our Climate Pact. So, in conclusion, uh, Mr. President, this is my offer of cooperation. I say this also for very selfish reasons, because we wouldn't get anything done without local and regional authorities being on board and being fully informed and being fully engaged. Your regions and your cities will make the difference in the Green Deal. I'm fully aware of that. And we need your links, your direct links to our citizens to also keep them fully engaged. We are doing this not for ourselves. We're doing this for our children and for our grandchildren. And I think, honestly, as a citizen, there is nothing more noble than putting the interests of future generations before your own. That's why we need to make this transition now in the Green Deal. That's why we can make it happen. And I count on your help and your support to make this a reality. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Vice President Timmermans. Dear Frank, uh, one more time, your uh, presence in our committee was 
really very interesting and very important. And uh, I say that because I really want to thank you for all of your proposals that were right to the point. Uh, we will have our teams work together in order to see how we will move forward towards uh, implementing these very interesting proposals. And uh, it's true, and I keep this from what you said, that Green Deal has many reasons that we need to make it happen now. But the most important one is the outcomes and the results of the climate change that we are witnessing all across Europe and all across the world today. The disasters that are happening constantly. For example, last week we had the disasters in France and Italy. We even have uh, communication with uh, the president of the region of Provence, Côte d'Azur, on the disasters they had uh, some days ago. In Greece, we had awful disasters the previous months. And the same goes to other countries as well, basically the ones are, that are located in the Mediterranean area. We need to move forward with the Green Deal now. We need to address climate change. We have no more time to lose. So thank you very much, Vice President Timmermans, for underlying this aspect of the need to move forward today, not tomorrow. Let me proceed now with our members, and I would like to give the floor to Moreno Bonilla. Yeah. <coughs> señor Vicepresidente de la Comisión Europea, señor Presidente del Comité de las Regiones, señoras y señores miembros del Comité de las Regiones, debatimos hoy un tema del que depende la sociedad europea que queramos para el futuro. Tomar medidas frente al cambio climático es un desafío urgente que considero que todos compartimos. El clima y sus efectos son para el Gobierno de Andalucía, mi, mi región, una completa y absoluta prioridad. Y así lo hemos asumido con una apuesta ambiciosa y sin precedente de acción por el clima que hemos denominado Revolución Verde. No puede ser de otra manera. Nuestra gran diversidad biológica, nuestra posición geoestratégica y una economía muy vinculada a nuestro patrimonio natural nos obligan a ello. Además, como miembro del Comité de las Regiones, he tenido el honor de asumir la ponencia del dictamen sobre la Ley Europea del Clima, dictamen que adoptó en el Pleno del pasado mes de julio por una amplia mayoría de 197 votos a favor. Todos sabemos que la Ley Europea del Clima es uno de los pilares del Pacto Verde Europeo que hoy debatimos y un marco rogativo clave en la configuración de la economía europea para las próximas décadas. Precisamente, en relación con la Ley Europea del Clima, permítanme recordar dos recomendaciones que contenía nuestro dictamen. La primera, que el dictamen recogió expresamente el objetivo para 2030 de una reducción de emisiones de al menos el 55% en comparación con los niveles de 1990. En este punto, una adopción de objetivos más ambiciosos puede ser inviable y tener incluso un efecto negativo no deseado en la economía europea. Por ello, esperamos que la tramitación de la propuesta de reglamento se imponga finalmente el sentido común y la sensatez en este ámbito. La segunda, las regiones y ciudades de Europa van a desempeñar un papel clave en la aplicación de las políticas comprendidas en el marco del derecho climático. Por ello, es necesario que se tengan en cuenta, que se tengan muy en cuenta sus opiniones al considerar las revisiones de la trayectoria hacia la neutralidad climática y se abogue por una asignación directa de fondos que tienen que estar bien calibradas para las medidas adaptadas a escala regional y a escala local. Considero que son dos recomendaciones cruciales y que, a mi juicio, deben ser tenidas en cuenta en el debate interinstitucional en el que se encuentra inmerso en estos momentos el proyecto de ley europea del clima. Finalizo 
agradeciendo la posibilidad de participar en este intenso y positivo debate y además estoy convencido que entre todos vamos a hacer de Europa una región líder en esa transición energética y en esa lucha por el cambio climático. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Uh, I want to say that um, I really appreciate the very hard and uh, important work that you have done uh, in our committee and especially concerning the climate law of which you are the rapporteur of the Committee of the Regions. And I'm really looking forward in working with you in the near future towards attaining these goals. Let me move now to uh, giving the floor to Seyas Espadas, our colleague, please. Buenos días, eh, señor presidente del Comité de Regiones, y buenos días también al vicepresidente Timmermans. Eh, en nombre de todos los componentes, eh, en este caso del Grupo Socialista, eh, quiero… Eh, creo que tengo algún problema con la cámara. Ahora, eh, ¿pueden verme? Sí. Eh, como les decía, en nombre de todos los componentes del Grupo Socialista… Quiero eh, decirle, señor Timerman, en primer lugar, que estamos agradecidos a su liderazgo en relación con la, eh, convertir el Pacto Verde Europeo en uno de los ejes de los pilares centrales de la estrategia de recuperación, eh, de reconstrucción de la Unión Europea en estos momentos de pandemia. Creo que, eh, como se ha dicho aquí, eh, en estos momentos en las regiones y ciudades de, del proyecto europeo estamos preocupados eh, en salir de esta crisis sanitaria, pero también ocupados en intentar acelerar los cambios y las transformaciones que tienen que produ producirse necesariamente en relación con nuestro entorno para poder asegurar la vida en el planeta. Por tanto, el Pacto Verde Europeo, que sin duda es un proyecto eh, ambicioso, un gran reto, debe ser un proyecto inclusivo, debe ser un proyecto que tanto social como desde el punto de vista ecológico permita a la Unión Europea avanzar en un proyecto eh, del que podamos sentirnos orgullosos en los próximos años. En ese sentido, coincido con usted, señor Timmermans, en la dificultad del reto. Este proceso, sin duda, va a ser un proceso difícil, pero este proceso debe llevarse a cabo en todos y cada uno de los pueblos y ciudades de la Unión Europea. El Pacto Verde Europeo debe ser un pacto verde en todos y cada uno de los territorios. Debe tener la singularidad y debe tener las características que cada uno de esos territorios necesitan para transformarse en base a los grandes objetivos europeos que eh, ustedes están marcando desde la Comisión Europea. Por eso, quería lanzarle, en primer lugar, la idea de que eh, no es posible eh, convertir los objetivos de los que nos estamos dotando y un objetivo tan ambicioso como el que se ha planteado aquí de reducción de emisiones, si no somos capaces de convertir en acción y en proyectos concretos en el territorio esos objetivos. Por tanto, la primera idea, querido presidente, vicepresidente Timmermans, sería que necesitamos pasar de los objetivos, en este caso, e incluso de los cambios regulatorios, debemos avanzar hacia los cambios organizativos y, sobre todo, la traslación de los recursos económicos directamente al territorio cuanto antes. Debemos ser capaces de convertir esos objetivos en proyectos. Y los proyectos ya existen, vicepresidente Timerman. Como decía en este caso el presidente del Comité de Regiones, hemos podido comprobar desde la Comisión ENVE, desde el grupo de trabajo, en este caso del Pacto Verde Europeo que tenemos en este Comité de Regiones, hemos podido comprobar cómo el llamamiento a nuestras ciudades y regiones se ha convertido en 200 proyectos de referencia que cumplen los objetivos marcados por la Comisión Europea. Tenemos que convertir esos 200 proyectos en miles de proyectos en cada uno de los territorios de la Unión Europea. Y eso no es posible en estos momentos con una arquitectura que está organizada demasiado eh, rígido en, en los Estados miembros eh, y que dificulta la llegada de los recursos económicos desde la Unión Europea 
a las regiones y, sobre todo, a las ciudades y a los núcleos rurales. Ahí está la auténtica clave para acelerar el proceso, vicepresidente Timmermans. Y, por tanto, le propongo, en primer lugar, conseguir que la Unión Europea tenga un pacto verde europeo en cada territorio. Para eso tenemos que implicar a la sociedad y tenemos que tener recursos para hacer más campañas y más procesos de participación. En segundo lugar, tenemos que identificar proyectos piloto concretos, como esos 200 que tenemos ahora mismo en esa base de datos, y tenemos que convertir esos proyectos piloto en proyectos financiados, pero en toda la Unión Europea. Hay un gran desequilibrio entre unas regiones y otras a la hora de conseguir eh, financiación de proyectos, porque necesitan más apoyo técnico, porque necesitan poder, en este caso, ir más deprisa en la obtención de esos recursos y hacerlo bien, hacerlo, en este caso, para conseguir los objetivos en materia de cambio climático. Y coincido plenamente con usted que la revolución verde solo será posible si transformamos la movilidad sostenible en nuestros territorios, si tra transformamos el transporte y si transformamos la eficiencia energética en todos sus aspectos, pero sobre todo en la vivienda. Esos dos elementos necesitan contar con recursos económicos concretos gracias. en el territorio. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, um, alcalde Espada. Um, I want you to know that uh, as president of uh, the Enve Commission, uh, we have been following your great work there and uh, uh, we will be collaborating very closely in the near future. Uh, and I think it would be a good idea to s organize uh, a trilateral between uh, uh, Vice President Timmermans, yourself and, and myself, in order to see and discuss the issues concerning uh, the matter at hand. So I would like to give the floor now to Emon Dooley, our colleague, please. Mr. Dooley. Obviously, there is a technical issue, so we are moving on to Mr. Kozlovsky, please. Szanowny Panie Przewodniczący, bardzo serdecznie dziękuję za udzielenie mi głosu. Witam Państwa wszystkich bardzo serdecznie. Pozdrawiam z Małopolski. Szanowni Państwo, Zielony Ład musi być z jednej strony odpowiedzią na kryzys gospodarczy spowodowany pandemią, z drugiej okazją do wdrożenia systemu, który połączy sprawiedliwą transformację środowiskową, ekonomiczną i społeczną. Osiągnięcie neutralności klimatycznej wymaga zdecydowanych działań, w tym bodźca w postaci dodatkowych środków finansowych. Musimy wykazać się zdrowym rozsądkiem i elastycznością, albowiem żadna transformacja nie powiedzie się bez zaangażowania wszystkich podmiotów na szczeblu europejskim, krajowym, regionalnym i lokalnym. Ogromnej szansy dla sprawiedliwej transformacji energetycznej regionów, w tym reprezentowanej przeze mnie Małopolski, upatruję w mechanizmie sprawiedliwej transformacji, który ma wspomóc w usuwaniu negatywnych skutków społeczno-gospodarczej transformacji energetycznej. Małopolska, którą reprezentuję, w poważnym zakresie jest uzależniona od węgla. Zajmujemy jedenastą pozycję wśród regionów europejskich pod względem liczby miejsc bezpośrednio związanych z wydobyciem i wykorzystaniem tego surowca oraz dwunaste pod względem ryzyka skutków społeczno-gospodarczej transformacji energetycznej. Transformację energetyczną w Małopolsce rozpoczęliśmy już w latach 90., jednak zamknięcie w tym okresie dwóch kopalni wciąż ma negatywne skutki społeczne i gospodarcze. Dalszym krokom w kierunku neutralności klimatycznej muszą towarzyszyć odpowiednio wysokie źródła finansowania. Małopolska od wielu lat prowadzi prekursorskie działania na rzecz poprawy jakości powietrza i ochrony klimatu. 
realizujemy projekt zintegrowany LIFE dotyczący powietrza, a od 2021 roku rozpoczynamy kolejny projekt LIFE 2 dotyczący klimatu. Współpracujemy przy tym z samorządami lokalnymi, jednostkami naukowymi oraz przedsiębiorstwami. Jako jeden z siedmiu regionów w Europie realizujemy projekt START z pomocy technicznej Platformy Regionów Węglowych w Transformacji. Współpraca ta zaowocowała przygotowaniem szeregu koncepcji projektów pilotażowych, których całkowita wartość została szacowana na ponad 3 miliardy złotych. Szanowni Państwo, na zakończenie apeluję o zapewnienie odpowiednio wysokich źródeł finansowania przeznaczonych na pełne wdrażanie polityki Zielonego Ładu oraz zapewnienie regionom wpływu na procedury decyzyjne dotyczące identyfikacji projektów. Dziękuję Państwu za uwagę. Thank you very much. I would like to now move on to Adrias Grifroy. Mr. Grifroy, you have the floor for two minutes. Do you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice President Timmermans, for your um, uh, short tussenkomst. We have elkaar gisteren ook gezien tijdens het federaal uh, energie- en klimaatoverleg in uh, Vlaanderen, Brussel, uh, België. En ik denk dat we kunnen onderschrijven dat iedereen een green recovery wil, met inclusief een green deal en het streven naar klimaatneutraliteit. Maar dan moeten ze uiteraard ook voldoen aan drie voorwaarden. En die zijn volgens onze groep, de Europese Aliens, gebaseerd op drie principes. Het eerste principe is, eh, het moet evenwichtig zijn. Dit betekent een goede combinatie tussen, of een link vinden tussen gele en groene hesjes. En daarvoor is een flexibele aanpak nodig, rekening houdende met de technische haalbaarheid en rekening houdende met de kostenefficiëntie die voor iedere regio of voor iedere grote stad verschillend kan zijn. Twee is het doelgerichtheid. En ik denk dat u daar zeer goed de juiste accenten legt. Eh, omtrent het prioriteren van een aantal sectoren, zoals woningbouw, transport, landbouw, circulaire economie, zoeken naar de laagste kost om de grootste re reductie van CO2 te realiseren. Maar drie, en dat is dan ook de vraag naar u toe, is de bottom-up approach. 70% van de uitstoot is lokaal, maar minstens 70% van de oplossing zit ook lokaal. En dus met andere woorden, wij vragen met aandrang dat lokale en regionale autoriteiten worden betrokken, niet enkel in de uitvoering, zoals u daarnet ook aankaarde, maar vooral ook in de besluitvorming, vooral ook in de earmarking van de funding. En tot slot had ik nog een beek om de opmerking, omdat ik hoorde spreken over waterstof. U hamert heel hard op groene waterstof. U weet ook zeer goed dat groene waterstof is een energiedrager en kan eigenlijk maar geproduceerd worden op basis van overschotten van productie van groene elektriciteit, want anders vermijd je fataal verbruik. En dan bij komen spreken over import vanuit Afrika, wat de mogelijkheid zou kunnen zijn voor de toekomst, zal ons weer terug energie afhankelijk maken van buiten het continent Europa. En daarmee vraag ik aan u, waarom wordt u ook niet meer ingezet op carbon capture storage, dus het opslag van CO2 en herbruik van CO2, om zo onze eigen industrie een steun in de rug te geven. Dank u. Dank u wel. Onze collega, meneer Dooley, please, is connected now. U hebt de floor. Mr. Bernd Klaus Vos, please. Ja, vielen Dank, Herr Vorsitzender. Vielen Dank, Herr Kommissar. Ich glaube, 
von Seiten der Grünen sagen zu können, mit dem Beschluss des EU-Parlaments zum Klimagesetz in der vergangenen Woche ist einmal mehr wie deutlich geworden, dass die Klimakrise ernst genommen wird, dass es angekommen ist und äh, dass jetzt auch zügig umgesetzt werden muss und so ein Gesetz nicht verwässert werden darf. Doch lassen Sie uns nicht vergessen, dass die Zahlen, auf die wir uns jetzt stützen, seit Jahrzehnten bekannt sind und auch die Dringlichkeit auf Klimaschutztechnologien und auf erneuerbare Energien zu setzen. Die Energien sollten wir anders als jetzt zu einem überwiegenden Teil auch hier in Europa erzeugen. Wir haben bei mir in Schleswig-Holstein sehr erfolgreiche, auch kleine und mittelständische Unternehmen, die über Jahre hinaus die Erzeugung erneuerbarer Energien aus Wind und Sonne vorangetrieben haben und inzwischen auch die ganze Kette bis zur Wasserstofftechnologie, bis zur Tankstelle, bis zum Gasnetz umgesetzt haben. Und so sehr wir Wasserstofftechnologie für die Umsetzung der Energiewende benötigen, sollten wir die Entwicklung und Nutzung nicht davon treiben lassen, überall weltweit erneuerbare Erzeugungspotenziale für unsere Wasserstofferzeugung, für den Export abzugreifen. Das blockiert die Entwicklung in den Ländern dort und es blockiert letztlich unsere Entwicklung hier. Herr Timmermann, Sie sagen, der Schlüssel zur Erneuerbaren, zur Klimaneutralität bis 2050 sind neue Technologien und Innovationen. Doch lass uns auch daran denken, wo neue Technologien und Innovationen Realität werden oder auch schon lange Realität sind. Das ist regional, das ist vor Ort, ich habe das geschildert. Und dort, wo fruchtbare Bedingungen für die Menschen hinter den Technologien und Innovationen geschaffen werden. Und wo hakt es? Ja, es hakt. Dabei, dass wir global wirksames CO2-Budget brauchen, CO2-Grenzsteuern brauchen, CO2-Fußabdruck brauchen, der auch bei importierten Produkten sichtbar und bepreisbar wirkt. Green Deal und Next Generation Fund müssen so aufgebaut werden, dass Regionen, Städte und Kommunen unser stärkstes Assess und die ausführende Kraft im Klimawandel im Kampf gegen den Klimawandel es möglichst leicht haben, ihre Potenziale auszuschöpfen. Und ich betone noch einmal, Regionen und Städte sind nicht die Umsetzer, sie sind der Ursprung von Innovationen. Sie müssen eng in alle Prozesse eingebunden werden. Sie müssen, wir müssen weg von der Annahme, dass es eine unangenehme Schwierigkeit ist, die Unterschiedlichkeiten in Europa zu vereinen, hin zu der Erkenntnis, Unterschiedlichkeit und gemeinsame Ziele sind unser stärkstes Assess. Thank you very much. Uh, we move now to Mr. Rastislav Tranka. Ms. Rosa Balas Torres, please. Mr. Rob. Ah, okay, go ahead, uh, Ms. Balas Torres. Rosa, go ahead, we cannot hear you. Bueno, gracias, Presidente. Creo que ahora sí, había un problema, no, no podía acceder al... No me daban acceso. Muchas gracias, Presidente. Estimado Vicepresidente, el Pacto Verde Europeo debe convertirse, sin lugar a duda, en la piedra angular para garantizar un crecimiento sostenible tras la salida de la crisis derivada de la pandemia. La región que represento, Extremadura, está firmemente comprometida con los principios que inspiran este pacto. Prueba de ello son las estrategias de economía verde y circular de Extremadura que aspiran a convertirse y a convertir la sostenibilidad en el principal vector de desarrollo de la región y el Plan Extremeño Integrado de Energía y Clima 
que pretende avanzar en la transición energética y alcanzar la neutralidad climática en el año 2030. Estas iniciativas permitirán, entre otras cosas, fijar población al territorio y actuar ante uno de los retos más importantes que tenemos en algunas regiones europeas, como es el reto demográfico. Por todo ello, reivindicamos que las regiones que han apostado fuerte por una salida verde de la crisis y que tienen, como la región de Extremadura, un menor grado de desarrollo, precisan de una instrumentación rápida y eficaz de los fondos de recuperación. Cualquier retraso que impida disponer de esta financiación que resulta vital puede provocar la cronificación de la crisis económica, además de retrasar o hacer retroceder peligrosamente los proyectos en marcha para favorecer la transición ecológica. Muchísimas gracias. Muchísimas gracias, Rosa. I give the floor now to, uh... Mr. Bernard Soleil Baril. Okay, uh, we move now to our colleague, Ms. Dwayne Stanley, please. Ms. Dwayne Stanley, are you connected? Okay, so we move on, and I give the floor to our ex-president, uh, ex uh, our dear, dearest friend, Marco Marcula, please. Good morning. Can you hear me, Mr. President? I can hear Mr. you. Mr. President, can you hear me? Do I, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, okay, can. thank you very thank, thank you very much. Uh, good morning from Ireland. Uh, I live in the Midlands region in County Leash, an area most affected by the transition from brown to green energy, and also an area with a low industrial base. The state has gone from carbon intensive power generation to renewable energy. This transition was to take place over a 10 year period, but has happened in one year in my region. This has led to huge job losses in the area, in particular in two state owned companies. Board Nomona and the ESB. The household income in the Midlands is over 15% lower than the average in the state. Along with peat being used to generate electricity, it is also used to heat most homes in, in the region. We need to roll out a deep retrofitting of homes in the region, provide local bus transports, provide more cycleways, uh, alternatives to reduce our carbon footprint, and support companies like Board Nomona who have ambitious plans to move to renewable energy such as solar, wind and biomass, the rewetting of our bogs for carbon sequestration. Significant funding is required as the Midlands is one of the designated parts of the EU coal regions. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. you very President. much. Thank you. Uh, the floor to Marco Marcula, our President, for one minute. Um, thank you. Thank you, First Vice President Timmermans. It's really great that you stressed uh, strongly the role of the COR as, a, as the Green Deal channel to cities and regions. We are taking that very seriously, and we are ready to showcase what does it mean that uh, sustainability is a new normal for all our communities, our businesses, and our individuals. And as well, uh, we are showcasing in concrete terms what does it mean implementing 
sustainability and circular economy in all our decision making, public and private, I stress the private sector as well, including budgeting processes. And uh, now personally as well, representing my own region, Helsinki region, we are committed to work very closely on this, uh, showing that uh, the future is and will be invented together with the cities and regions and the Commission. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Markula. Uh, Rob Jonkman, please. Mr. Jonkman, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Chair. And uh, dear Executive Vice President Timmermans, uh, I have listened to this debate with great interest, and it seems we all know what to do in this room. However, let's not forget how these policies will affect ordinary people. And I have the feeling that we often forget real people in our discussions, especially those who live far from Brussels in our villages and rural areas. You just said something about it in your speech, but the Green Deal itself contains little about the intended impact on the green transition in rural areas. Yet half of the European population still lives outside the big cities. And little is said about non-carbon dioxide emissions, such as methane. Much of this is produced in the agricultural processes. And our farmers need real support and tangible investments. And I ask you, dear Commissioner, what are the Commission's plans to help agricultural uh, areas reduce their emissions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The floor now to Mr. Bernard Solé-Baril. Could you hear me at this moment? Yes. Okay, thanks, Mr. President, Vice President Timmermans. First of all, uh, let, me, let me highlight some of the projects that we are developing in Catalonia. Last year, we approved an ambitious plan to incorporate the 17 SDGs into our policies. All of them are included in the current budget and the Economic Recovery and Social Protection Plan. We are moving to the right direction with the climate change law, which has its own tax system to assure its applications beyond budget agreements. The natural heritage, biodiversity and the maritime strategies provide a sustainable response to the challenges of the blue economy. The actions of the Catalan government with actors in the supply chain have led to a law to prevent food loss and waste. The law of agrarian spaces assures the disposition of agricultural lands for food production and in a sustainable and economic framework. There are many other initiatives, but we will only be able to live a better future if we bring citizens together around the European Green Deal. Thanks for all. Thank you very much. The floor now to Rafael Traskowski, please. Rafael, you have the floor. Can you hear me now? Of course, go. yes. Go ahead, go ahead, yes. Rafael. Thank you very much. First of all, thank you very much, President, and thank you very much uh, to the Vice President of the European Commission. I wanted to tell you that uh, we, the regional um, and local leaders, are fully committed to the Green Deal, and we want to um, implement ambitious and realistic targets. And I wanted to thank the European Commission, first of all, that in those difficult times, we keep the fight with the climate change as our utmost priority. And that, of course, we are now at the first front fighting with the epidemic, but that we have to do everything that we can to actually keep the priority and our commitments to the Green Deal. I wanted to tell you that we have to focus on the concrete projects and that the local and regional authorities and the EU institutions uh, are committed to full uh, cooperation and that we have to come up with projects that are going to bring a palpable added value, such as, for example, the renovation of uh, buildings. Second, a climate pact should be an umbrella for local climate partnerships and pacts across the EU to create the benchmarking and to allow us to actually learn from 
um, uh, each other. Dear Commissioner, uh, being the Mayor of Warsaw, I know very well all the problems uh, of the local governments. Our budgets have been hit by the pandemic, and this is, of course, much harder to implement sustainable policies, especially that some of us have uh, difficult to put it mildly, governments to cooperate with. That's why we uh, call on you to grant us access to direct funds for the green transition, because we want to demonstrate that change can be brought about quickly in uh, the European cities and also uh, European regions. That's one of the solutions that can actually help us demonstrate to the uh, citizens uh, the effectiveness of our policies. Dear Commissioner, you can count on us. We are the Green Deal ambassadors on the ground, and we count on you to work with the Committee of the Regions and us local and regional leaders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rafal. Um, I have to say that uh, we have been following very closely the work you have been doing with uh, uh, the, re the uh, report on the Climate Pact. And uh, as the Rapporteur of the Committee of the Regions, uh, we are uh, here to help and uh, collaborate with you in any possible way, because this is a very, very important issue that you are uh, handling now. Mayor, thank you very much. So let us now um, go to Vice President Timmermans for his reaction to what has been heard so far. Vice President, the floor is yours. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. And let me briefly reflect on some of the things that were said. First of all, uh, I do agree uh, with all those who say that um, the level of our success will also depend on the quality of the projects, and the quality of the projects is very often determined by your actions. Uh, so I think this is uh, something we need to watch uh, collectively, um, especially in the renovation wave. Uh, the quality of the projects will play a, a huge role to get the, the financing we need. But also in submitting plans uh, for Next Generation EU, we have to avoid the trap uh, to just submit the same old plans that would always have been submitted, um, we have to make sure the plans that are submitted, uh, first of all, uh, comply uh, with our commitment that we will do no harm, so they should not go into another direction than helping us to become climate neutral. And secondly, that a substantial per, uh, percentage, 37% of the plans, should actually be uh, part of our climate policy. So there we need to work uh, very closely uh, uh, together. And, of course, the, the projects will differ uh, because of the different uh, levels of development, different levels of um, challenges in different member states and within member states in different regions. This brings me to the second point, which uh, Rafał also mentioned and others which is perhaps a, a political challenge we need to address directly. Traditionally, when we talk about structural funds, etc., everything we do goes through uh, the national authorities, the central authorities. We need to find ways in this stage of uh, uh, the projects, in this stage of Next Generation EU, and for the next seven years of the multi-annual financial framework, to work more directly with cities and regions. Uh, uh, but for that, we will need to convince also the national authorities, and I would absolutely need your help in that. Um, uh, it should be avoided that, let's put it this way, in, a, in, the, in the mildest form I can, I can find, it should be avoided that purely party political considerations would hamper our efforts in making... Um, uh, necessary projects uh, uh, work uh, in the uh, regional and uh, local level. I think this is a point of, of concern that I have, and we really need to look at this. It sh this should be driven by the quality of the projects and by the necessity on the ground. And the ones who are best placed to judge that are local and regional authorities, hopefully in close uh, consultation, cooperation with national authorities. Uh, but if that is not um, if that is not something that works well, the European Commission should be in a position to help hope, uh, local and regional authorities to implement what needs to be done to reach climate neutrality. Now, um, the issue of, of the common agricultural policy, we need the reform. I'm saddened by the fact that the Council and the European Parliament have decided to postpone the reform with two years. It's, uh, in my view, two years that could have been used for the reform. This reform will also be supported by 
our farm to fork strategy, which is something uh, many of our citizens want, and our biodiversity strategy. You know, agriculture is one of the bottlenecks in all this transformation, and we need to make sure we create a sustainable future on a different basis for our agricultural communities. And we are working very closely with the regions and also with the sector to make that happen. But I acknowledge that there is a lot of anxiety in that sector because um, uh, this transformation is going to be very intrusive for everyone, uh, not just in the agriculture sector, in the car industry, in the steel industry. In many industries, this is going to be very in intrusive, but we can find a solution to that and we can redefine a better future for agricultural communities across the European Union on the basis of the plans uh, we have launched. Um, I do believe that hydrogen will be part uh, of uh, the solution in the future, both in terms of energy storage and as a direct energy source. And I think the plans that I see everywhere across the European Union are mushrooming uh, uh, at a level that I had never, would never have anticipated only six months ago. So this is really taking off. CCS is a technology that we will use. We are using it, not in the initial, I think, not so much in the initial idea uh, for uh, decarbonizing coal, because I don't think there is any future in coal, and it's uh, technologically also extremely complicated, but it can be used in decarbonizing natural gas, for instance. That's a lot easier, and, and that could also help the transition from uh, coal via natural gas to clean natural gas and then to hydrogen. So I think CCS has a, a role to play, and the projects we see in uh, a number of member states are promising, and also in a, a number of states we work with, like Norway, uh, that are outside the European Union. Uh, let me stop here and just reiterate once again, Mr. President, that we're at the Commission are ready to work closely with the committee and with your members to make sure that we actually implement the changes that are needed. Because not doing this, and I say this to, uh, to a few of the skeptics I heard this morning, not doing this will be much, much more costly in terms of finances, in terms of human life, in terms of uh, quality of living than doing this, even if doing this is complicated and costly. Thank you very much. Vice President uh, Timmermans, uh, dear Frank, thank you very much for uh, being with us today. I know your schedule is very heavy today, but you found the time for uh, this discussion in our uh, plenary. Uh, yes, indeed, we will move on with uh, this uh, collaboration together, and I think uh, that by joining forces we can, uh, we can make everything possible. Uh, so uh, we keep uh, um, uh, all the interesting things that were said today uh, on, from your side. And I thank you again very much, uh, understanding that you have to leave us at this point. However, we will continue our discussion on that issue. And I would like to give the floor now to uh, Ms. Brigitte Onet. Ja, vielen Dank. Wir sind uns einig, wir müssen ein starkes Fundament für den Green Deal legen, wenn wir unser gemeinsames Ziel, ein klimaneutrales Europa in 2050 erreichen wollen. Ich komme aus einer Region mit energieintensiven Industrie. In Niedersachsen hat der Stahlkonzern die Salzgitter AG ihre Heimat. Als Berichterstatterin des ADR zum grünen Wasserstoff ist mir sehr bewusst, dass wir diese Technologie besonders im industriellen Bereich, aber auch im Verkehrssektor brauchen. Viele Unternehmen stehen jetzt bereit, um zu investieren. Sie warten dringend darauf, dass aus der EU-Strategie zur Energie und Wasserstoff jetzt weitere konkrete Maßnahmen folgen. Wir brauchen den schnellen Markthochlauf und müssen deshalb parallel Produktion hochfahren und Nachfrage generieren. Wir brauchen die EU-weite Nachhaltigkeitsklassifizierung. Wir brauchen die Sektorenintegration. Um das alles zu erreichen, ist eine schnellstmögliche Überarbeitung der EU-Gesetzgebung zu erneuerbaren Energien und zum transeuropäischen Energie- und Verkehrsnetz notwendig. Und das ist meine Bitte an die Kommission, dafür schnellstmöglich zu sorgen. Vielen Dank. Danke schön. The floor now to our colleague, Mr. Eamon Dooley, please. Uh, 
Can you hear me, Mr. President? Yes, go ahead, Damon. Uh, thanks, Mr. President. Uh, Commissioner President von der Leyen yesterday said she wants more than concrete projects from local and regional politicians. She wants a vision. As someone whose community is dealing with the abrupt shutdown of the Irish pit industry, a bit like your own Lignite this year, with job losses per head of population, my local authority is the equivalent of 40,000 jobs in Dublin. I see every day the consequences of an unplanned just transition. I am eyewitness to the dangers of an unjust transition, to the devastation of its reeks on its rural European citizens, and who with little help could not just supply the vision that Commission President seeks, but breathe life into it, transform it into an image and reality. Instead, my rural community is faced with a decline that shows no sign of abating. The doctor in my local town informs me that in the past 12 months, she has seen a huge increase in the number of redundant workers presenting with mental health issues as their quality of life, their sense of self-worth and their value to society are declining. As unemployment increases, disposable income in the area is in such decline that it is now the lowest in the state. As living standards fall, students cannot afford to advance to third level education. This is the lived reality in my constituency. We are once again recreating what the Irish poet Goldsmith called the deserted village, and he could have been described in my home community when these words flowed from his pen. But now the sounds of population fail, no cheerful numbers fluctuate in the gale, no busy steps the grass grown foot will tread, but all the gloomy flush of life is fled. While Europe seeks a Europe closer to the citizens, fostering the sustainable and integrated development of, among others, rural areas and local initiatives, my community experiences only a cruel and unjust program forced upon it from on high. But the community of which I still am very proud is resilient. It has fended itself in the past. In the past, the community developed partnerships with funding agencies. The local authority kept the village alive, the spirits up and retained some hope in the hearts. We will face this new challenge as we have done before, but this rural community can't win this battle alone. We have shown before that a plan agreed between the impacted workers, communities, social partners, the local authority and the regional authorities stands a far greater chance of success than a top-down approach. If Europe seeks closer connection with its citizens, it must place those citizens at the heart of the Just Transition programme. We need to be citizens-centred. The meagre Just Transition Fund proposed by the Council will not make its vision a reality. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Mr. Rastislav Tranka, please. The floor to you. Thank you. Uh, dear Mr. President, dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to thank you very much, Mr. Vice President, for the agenda he is taking care of. This is a real public interest because there is nothing more important than the environment we live in, our health, which is the reflection, and so a Green Deal is a good roadmap to a common goal. We have a Green Deal working group in the committee where we strive to ensure that our voice, the voice of those closest the, to the citizens, is heard and incorporated, which is a way I would like to ask you. Uh, Will the European Commission influence national governments so that the effects of the Green Deal and its just transition file, which is also to be used by the Košice Salgarin region, are really felt in these regions? Will, will we be the regions and cities at the helm of the ship and not just the crew who is do not decide, decide the direction or, and who just follow the orders of the national government? Thank you. Okay, dear colleagues, uh, we need to move on a little bit quicker. If there is someone from uh, our colleagues, from the members who do not wish to take the floor or can uh, uh, decide not to, to speak on that issue, it would be appreciated because we have a great pressure of time. The floor now to Mr. Dimitris Karnavos. Mr. Karnavos, you have the floor. Thank you. 
Kieran McCarthy, please. You have the floor. Uh, thanks, Mr. President. Um, can I just say very briefly, I mean, the Green Deal is a regular topic on our agenda. I think it's important to mention as well the SDGs and the European Green Capitals and the H2020 and Interreg and ERB Act and the EU Urban Agenda uh, and many other climate adaptation strategies in, in local and regional authorities. And there's no shortage of best practice out there. I think such best practices need to be scaled up and implemented as well. And certainly I think the CUR looks forward to working with uh, the Commissioner on his proposals he brought to us this morning on the Covenant to Mayor's seat and aligning actions uh, between the Commission and the CUR. I'd like to thank the Commissioner for his hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being brief, brief Kieran. Anna Maguire, please. Isabel Boudinot, please. Javier Villa Ferrero, please. Uh, this is, uh, hello, do you hear me? Go ahead, Anna, go ahead. Uh, the uh, President and colleagues, uh, the Green Deal is a big global challenge. We have to find solutions here in Europe and over the world. I'm happy to let you know that uh, the Hungarian Parliament declared that Hungary has to fulfill the climate neutrality till year 2050. This decision is the seventh over the world, not in Europe, Seventh over the world, so Hungary is in the forefront. Also, Hungary has decided to produce 90% of the electricity uh, carbon dioxide free, free till year 2030. Work to follow Hungary on this way. Representing, uh, representing regions and citizens, we have to insist on introducing complex environment friendly, people friendly solutions which do not stop the economical growth in Europe. Other countries of the world do not stop or decrease their economy. We insist on have keeping the preferential cost of energy for the families, which has been one of the top priorities in Hungary for many years. In conclusion, balanced approach, keeping in mind that citizens shouldn't suffer from solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. The floor now to Hanna. Dziękuję bardzo, Panie Przewodniczący. Praktycznie mój głos jest głosem Rafała Trzaskowskiego, który już na ten temat powiedział, czyli bez środków bezpośrednio dedykowanych władzom lokalnym trudno będzie osiągnąć to, co założyliśmy sobie w Europejskim Zielonym Ładzie. Ale korzystając z okazji, chciałam zwrócić na jeszcze jeden szczegół, który do tej pory jakoś nie odbył się w dyskusji, który bezpośrednio być może nie dotyczy zeroemisyjnej gospodarki. Natomiast COVID spowodował jedną rzecz. Gwałtowny wzrost sprzedaży internetowej i ślad za tym przyrost gwałtownej ilości opakowań, które zalewają dosłownie nasze miasta i nasze regiony. Nie tylko tych pochodzących z Unii Europejskiej. Myślę, że dobrze by było, gdybyśmy zajęli się tym tematem, jak zablokować bądź też przekazać określone środki na gospodarkę cyrkularną czy instalacje, które będą przetwarzały te odpady, bo one faktycznie ich ilość będzie teraz gwałtownie wzrastała. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much. The floor now to Arno Kompacher, our colleague. You have the floor. Uh, can you hear me now? Go ahead, please. Okay, thank you. 
Ähm, ich vertrete als Landeshauptmann des Autonomen Landes Südtirol einen ländlichen Raum und wir haben uns im Regierungsprogramm den SDGs verpflichtet und wir sehen auch als ländlicher Raum große Chancen in, im Green Deal, in der Nachhaltigkeitsstrategie. Mein konkretes Anliegen im Rahmen des Themas Kreislaufwirtschaft, das ist äh, im Rahmen der Farm to Fork Strategie die Notwendigkeit, dass wir äh, im Public Procurement, also im öffentlichen Beschaffungswesen, Möglichkeiten schaffen, dass wir öffentliche Menschen das lokale Produkt bevorzugt wird. Dafür bräuchte es natürlich auch eine äh, Herkunftszertifizierung und man müsste im Rahmen der EU-Richtlinie die Voraussetzungen dafür schaffen. Das ist nicht Protektionismus, das würde auch nur einen ganz winzigen Teil des Marktes betreffen, würde aber gerade die kleinen Landwirte unterstützen und äh, entsprechend auch sicherstellen, dass es Kreislaufwirtschaft tatsächlich gibt. Thank you very much. Mr. Aguilar Vasquez. Mr. Vlasak, please. Mr. Kahia. Mr. Przybilski. Szanowny Panie Przewodniczący, reprezentuję Dolny Śląsk, region z Polski, w którym wspieramy transformację sektora energetycznego z myślą o osiągnięciu neutralności klimatycznej do 2050 roku. Chcemy przygotować się do tej transformacji energetycznej. Opracowujemy regionalną strategię energetyczną. Jesteśmy zdeterminowani, aby osiągnąć zaproponowany przez Komisję Europejską cel dotyczący zwiększenia do 2030 roku redukcji emisji gazów cieplarnianych do ponad 50%. Jednak wymagać to będzie dla naszego regionu, w którym trwa jeszcze wydobycie węgla brunatnego, wzmożonego, Wsparcia, wsparcia, o którym też mówił i konieczności tego wsparcia mówi pan przewodniczący Timmermans w swoim wystąpieniu. Bardzo ważne dla nas jest także podnoszenie świadomości obywateli co do konsekwencji zachodzących zmian klimatycznych. Dlatego prowadzimy szeroką kampanię promocyjno-edukacyjną na temat czyste zasady, w której przybliżamy problem zanieczyszczenia powietrza Thank you. i prezentujemy regulacje, jakie walce z nimi Prowadzimy na poziomie regionalnym. Dziękuję. Thank you. Mr. Dimitris Karnavos, please. Ms. Villa Ferrero. Buenos días. Eh, gracias, presidente. Eh, le agradezco especialmente al vicepresidente Timmermans, en nombre de mi región, Asturias, eh, que nos tenga siempre presentes en sus discursos como un ejemplo de las regiones de la Unión Europea que deben enfrentarse a una transición energética e industrial dando paso a un futuro 100% respetuoso con el medio ambiente y una economía basada en todas aquellas actividades que garanticen la sostenibilidad medioambiental, pero también la económica y la social. Y para ello hace falta apoyo y especialmente fondos. La Unión Europea está demostrando su compromiso a través del Next Generation EU y del Mecanismo de Transición Justa y ahora es necesario garantizar que las regiones tienen su cuota de participación en el proceso de gobernanza de dichos fondos. Debo insistir, por otro lado, en la necesidad de mantener en suspenso las condiciones macroeconómicas del pacto de estabilidad. Son la verdadera causa del retraso en la absorción de fondos estructurales. Mejor aún, le pido al vicepresidente que consideren aumentar los adelantos de los fondos a porcentajes verdaderamente significativos. Muchas gracias. 
Thank you very much. Uh, Johan Kalabui, rule, please. Our colleague. Muchas gracias, presidente. Solo dos reflexiones. En primer lugar, como usted ha citado, el Mediterráneo vive una situación especialmente compleja. Se calienta un 20% más que eh, el, el resto del planeta y, por tanto, necesita una respuesta específica eh, en el Pacto Verde Europeo. En segundo lugar, creemos también que el ferrocarril es esencial para la descarbonización de la economía y en ese sentido, corredores como el corredor mediterráneo son fundamentales también para impulsar un progreso eh, sostenible y cumplir los objetivos de neutralidad eh, climática. Finalmente, agradecer al señor Timberman su compromiso eh, y su sensibilidad hacia nuestra comunidad, a la que conoce bien, y eh, terminar también por pedir un compromiso a todos por criterios unificados para el turismo en Europa, porque están pasando un momento muy difícil. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. We have two last interventions. Iris Pereira, please. Okay, then. Christopher Drexler, our last intervention for this point. Okay, our colleague, Mr. Proust, please. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Just un, un mot. Je pense que ce serait une erreur d'avoir une approche simplement intra-européenne. Il me semble que parler du pacte vert, sauvegarder l'environnement, doit se traiter au niveau aussi mondial. Il faut intégrer nos relations commerciales. Il faut que l'environnement soit présent dans nos relations commerciales pour imposer à nos partenaires les mêmes critères que nos entreprises européennes. Et puis, il nous faut travailler aussi avec des pays en développement. Nous sommes passés à l'horizon de 50 ans, de 2 milliards d'habitants à une programmation de 11 milliards d'habitants. L'enjeu de demain, c'est de savoir comment nous pouvons vivre ensemble à 11 milliards d'habitants sur la Terre. Et je crois qu'effectivement, une grande erreur serait de ne travailler que sur le continent européen intramuros, en occultant ce qui se passe à l'extérieur, aussi bien vis-à-vis de, -vis de nos partenaires commerciaux que des pays en voie de développement, où nous devons renforcer obligatoirement les liens, de manière à ce que chacun et une prise de conscience fondamentale sur les grands défis écologiques de demain. Vous avez tout à fait, euh, je suis tout à fait d'accord avec vous. Vous avez euh, vraiment euh, mis les choses euh, correctement, si vous me demandez. Euh, je suis tout à fait d'accord. Um, alors, euh, Lipon. We now move to the next uh, item of our agenda. Thank, uh, thank you all for participating uh, in this debate. Uh, we will move.